What's going on YouTube and everybody out there? How's everybody doing? My name is Jabari Showtime. I'd like to thank y'all for tapping in with me today. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and get straight into it. But you guys, this is a sports topic that has been weighing on my mind for the past couple of days with everything going on from NBA to track and field to some of your international sports like tennis right and just so much has been surrounding so much adversity and so much criticism has been surrounding these athletes right and i remember you know when my time growing up um, i played soccer when i was young i played basketball and football and primarily throughout high school i played basketball right and as we know, when it comes to these sports, whether it's team sports or it's individual sports, these sports can get very competitive. The dynamics in which you interact with individuals and others um, gets very competitive and tough and tense, right? And you have a coach, somebody who's there to guide you, there to lead you, and to teach you certain things and to construct you and to... Let you know wrong from right, right? And, you know, some coaches may have had, you know, like myself. Um, I remember when I first got into high school, um, I had a very hard-nosed old school coach. Um, a coach that, you know, yells in your face type of coach. And a coach that will tell you, you know, when you're wrong and very high on discipline, right? And in today's game and in today's sports, a lot of times, you know, a lot of um, these the star athletes just aren't used to, you know, taking any backlash or taking any criticism, whether it's constructive or not. They're just not used to or accustomed to anybody telling them when they're wrong or accustomed to being in a certain position or state where they're regarded as, you know, one of the best and one of the elites and falling short to one of their goals with that. Like when you look at a player like Kevin Durant, Somebody who's been considered one of the best players in the world of basketball, considered to be one of the best players in, in the NBA, and considered to be one of the NBA's greatest scorers in history, right? But, you know, we've seen uh, time and time again when adversity is at its highest, we've seen Kevin Durant, you know, pretty much fold, and we've seen Kevin Durant respond to critics in a very um negative, combative way, right? You know, we look throughout Kevin Durant's career. You know, he's had a pretty a pretty great career. He's going to be a first ballot Hall of Famer one day. He's a top 75 player, right? Two-time NBA champion and a two-time NBA Finals MVP. I personally don't put too much on a Finals MVP and things like that. Um, Tweet his own. However, uh, you know, Kevin Durant uh, has recently crested a trade out of Brooklyn. And... For many people, this is this is pretty much, you know, for many fans and for many analysts out there looking at this, it's, it's looking like a very bad look. Kevin Durant, uh, somebody who is a household name, Kevin Durant is somebody who's a very special, special, talented player. Being with the Brooklyn Nets and him being one of the, the face of the franchise and one of the um, shot callers over there. The Brooklyn Nets have really appealed to his word and put many pieces around him in order to please and appeal to him, right? They get Kyrie Irving. They get James Harden. They get, you know, many other role players like Seth Curry. They even signed Gron Dragas. They got, you know, guys like Joe Harris. They even signed DeAndre Jordan, who was pretty much washed up, right? They brought in LaMarcus Aldridge, right? And they've done so much for Kevin Durant and for him to pretty much give up so soon pretty much after two years because his first year he was rehabbing due to this Achilles tear right and throughout these two seasons with the Brooklyn Nets with all the help that they've given him you know from even signing Blake Griffin and Jeff Green he's only won one playoff series and now once out even after signing an extension contract for over the next five years Kevin Durant wants out and it's like, I propose a question is like, do modern athletes, are modern athletes these days um, as hard-nosed and as tough when it comes to, you know, when adversity is hitting the ceiling, even when criticism is hitting the ceiling at them at a very high rate, right? You even look at um, track and field with, you know, young Sha'Carri Richardson. Sha'Carri Richardson, um, a year ago, we witnessed, set a world record on a 100-meter Right, we seen her do that a year ago to qualify for the uh, Olympics, 
in Tokyo, but was suspended due to testing positive for marijuana, right? And we look past that. And she's had some wins here and there, right? Over this past last month, she was she was qualified to go to the uh, to participate in the uh, championship for the um, women's two hundred, but she did fall short um, to make it to the finals in the two hundred. She placed in fourth, right? And Shakira Richardson's response to the media was very triggering and nerve wracking. I understand that you know a lot of a lot of people are you know looking for Shakira Richardson to to fall and or you know can't wait to have any um clickbaiting news to break out. But at the end of the day, you can't necessarily wear your confidence on your sleeve only when you win, right? You can't expect any criticism or any backlash when you're not consistently dominating. When you're somebody that wears your confidence on your sleeve and you're you're the kind of type that talks that talk, you have to be consistently dominant. And Shakira Richardson is in the position that she's in because in the country, in this country, in the USA, she's one of the elites. She's one of the fastest female runners in this country, right? She was dominant at Carter High School. She was dominant at LSU. But amongst the elites in this country, she's not consistently dominant in winning. And for a woman like Shakari Richardson that wears her confidence on her sleeve, she's going to get a lot of backlash for that. Because when you are the kind of person, you know, that's going to talk about it, you have to also be about it. And you have to also be consistently dominant at it. And to not, and to avoid the media when losing, but running to the media when winning, is very, very contradicting. As with Naomi Osaka. Naomi Osaka last year, last year dropped out of the Wind Bleeding Tournament, which is the worldwide women's tennis tournament, right? Which is all the great tennis players across the world participate in. And this is the second year in a row Naomi Osaka has dropped out. Last year was due for, you know, mental health issues and not wanting to speak with the media so much. And this year, you know, may give her a pass because she has a leg injury. Um, however, Naomi Osaka has, you know, was once a former uh, women's number one player ranking in the world, has now, you know, skyrocketed and dropped down to number 43. Now, Naomi Osaka is a two-time champion when it comes to the U.S. Open. However, she has not um, placed well when it comes to um, the World Wide Tournament, which is the um, Wimbledon Tournament, right? And she... Another star athlete that's, you know, avoiding, you know, reporters and not wanting to talk to reporters. She's been fined for doing such. And it just goes to 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 you to say and think like, man, is is the modern athlete responding okay to criticism and adversity? As, you know, anything dealing with society has constructed us to, you know, become such individuals to that where we can be um Refined or redirected or any, <clears throat> anything such that we can't be told that we're wrong, that we can't be told that we can't make mistakes or anything, that we can't necessarily look in the mirror and self reflect on a few things. Well, that's just my thoughts, guys. I give me y'all's opinion. Opinion. All right. Peace.